Hello you guys, this is Fayyad from ACE and today we're talking about functions from AS Mathematics. Let's begin. Well, a function, we should start by defining it, right? A function is essentially a relationship between one or many input values to exactly one output value. Well, okay, that's a bit random for me to say. Fayyad, why is there, uh, why are inputs allowed to have many values, but then outputs are allowed to have only one? Well, an example should help clear this up. Say, you have your group of friends hanging around in your park. You have Alex, Bob, Martha, Cal, and Leonard. And if we were to say, give them all heights, right? Um, say Alex was five foot six inches. So that, um, that's a bit dull. <laughs> one so you have your friend group set up and let's say you want to find out the height of ran uh, one random friend so let's say bob and so what we would do is we, we would take a function say h and we would input it uh, for bob and as the output we would we should get the height that bob has right and that is six foot one that is exactly what's uh, going to be outputted by our height function and so Pay attention to the notation here. This right here is the function. In the middle, we have our input in between the parentheses. And finally, this on the other side is our output. Well, okay, that explains how we can have one input and then one output, sure. But what if we have many inputs? For the second example, let's say we have the same group of friends, but instead, this time around, we have Dennis. Let's say he has a height of 5 feet 6. Well, okay. What happens when we apply the height function on Alex? Well, same as before, right? We're going to get outputted with Alex's height, which is fine. If we do the same for Leonard, we get his height, which is 4 feet 11. And this should also be the same for Dennis, right? When we input Dennis, we should get the output of 5 feet 6. This, this all makes sense. As long as we're pr providing with a valid input that's within our playground, we should be getting a valid output. So even though there's many inputs for which they have the same output, 5 feet 6 in this case, we, this still stands, this, this is still functional. Right? This relationship is still functional as we always end up with a valid output. This, however, is a special type of function. It's called a many to one function. Well, it's pretty simple when you look at it. There's many inputs, Dennis and Alex, for which we have the same output, one output. Let's do another example. Say we have a basket of fruits. There we have apples, oranges, maybe there's some peaches in there, some plums maybe. And what we also have is the amount of each fruit that we have. Say we have 15 apples, 17 oranges, 23 peaches, and say 21 plums. All right, that's all good. Well, if we apply the function n for say numbers on our apples, we should be outputted with the number of apples that are in the basket, which is 15. And so, if we do the same for oranges, we get 17 as the output because there's 17 oranges. If, if you were to uh, visualize this, this would be like the basket of inputs, right? Say these are all my inputs. Let's do that in a different color. These are all my inputs. And we have apples, oranges, peaches, plums. And all of these inputs relate to their own outputs, which are 15... 17, 23, 15, 17, 23, and 21. Whenever we apply the function n on apples, we always get to the output of uh, 15. We do that with oranges, we get 17. Uh, these are my, uh, my set of outputs. 
if we apply for peaches, we get 23, right? And so as we go further down the line, we will see that these baskets, basket of inputs, and the, this basket of outputs will be very common. And since they're so common, what we did was we decided to name them. This basket of inputs is called your domain, whereas this basket of outputs is called your range or the set. So if you were to formally define them, your domain is the set of values or inputs for which the function is defined. In other words, if you were to pick something, a value or an input that was outside the domain, the function would would be like, wait, this doesn't make sense. What is this input that you're giving me? And so it would, it would spit out an output of, say, blank or question marks. And at the same time, we have the range, the set of outputs that the function can generate.